They get into the bag, ain't they, sir? They are getting to the bag, real talk. Without a doubt, not, not slipping even a little bit. It was all bag talk today in the uh, Patreon exclusive. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. We are definitely cooking with fish grease today. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to welcome you to the greatest bag talk show on earth, the Millionaire Morning Show. I am your host, Anton from AntonDaniels.com. If you have not already, we are definitely going to get the housekeeping out of the way. If you have not already, let me invite you to hit a like on your way in the door, especially for those that are restreaming this. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my other channel, Anton Daniels, where we either live stream or drop a video every single day without miss on my other channel. That link is in the description as well as the Lapeef Network, right? Subscribe to that. And then last but not least, my... Patreon gang, gang, I appreciate every last one of you. Thank you for rocking with me and holding me down. We just did a Patreon exclusive Q&A live stream with three different nurses. Every last one of these nurses I personally coach, I personally assist. They are all super dope, all getting to the bag, all getting to the money, and they are Every last one of them make over a quarter million dollars a year. How do I know this? I have verified it. I have seen their check stubs. I have seen everything about their life. And more importantly, as illustrated in the Patreon live stream, they will tell you Anton has helped multiply their money by helping them to understand not only how to get to the money they was already doing that, but how to leverage what they're already doing in order to make sure that they completely take over the world. It was an awesome conversation. If you have not seen that, it is available to re-live stream or to restream. Um, that is in the Patreon at the very top of the posts. If you have not, you should join the gang gang. The gang is absolutely awesome. Shout out to everybody in the Discord, the Facebook group as a result of joining the Patreon. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Can we get the show on the road? It was a absolutely phenomenal morning. I live streamed last night on my other channel, the Anton Daniels channel. I live streamed last night, ladies and gentlemen. Got off at about 2.30. I have no idea what time you guys continued to have the conversation after I got off. And then I was back up at 4.30 a.m. 4.30 a.m. this morning. I was back up and at them. Let me say this. Let me just say this definitively. I do not know a millionaire or an overly successful person that does not grind and work their butt off. If you have not tapped into the Patreon and seen anything of value that you could multiply your money with, learn how to budget more effectively, manifest certain greatness by taking control and being intentional with your schedule, looking at the mastermind sessions, looking at the, the Q&A that we did for over two hours with Pocket Watch and with JT, looking at the Q&A that I just did for an hour with three travel nurses. They have worked in ERs. They have worked in operating rooms. They have operated locally. They give you, listen, this session that I just talked about, they gave you the whole shebang about how long it takes to do it, how you can minimize the amount of money and time you have to take out zero student loans in order to do it. Now, see, this is not a conversation that I was just having in a silo. This was a conversation that I was having where they were giving you the game. 
This is not something that we was just talking about and trying to manifest and we're not praying for it like we in church and here, give me, this was a conversation where they were giving you the ins and outs, the true numbers of what these people were making based off of their own real life assessments and how they were able to break into the industry. Listen, it was so much game and so much information that it was people in the chat that was like, yo, I might have picked the wrong career. You talking about dudes on the low end. On the low end, they said that people is probably getting about 175 if they chilling and they working in certain states that don't even pay that much. On the high end, half a million dollars a year. Nursing, real life. Half a million dollars a year nursing. Do you know that I'm forgot if it was a call a per diem. Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. It was called a per diem or it was called a um, whatever it was. It was like the amount that they give you additional for housing. Do you know that it's people that's getting almost a hundred thousand dollars a year in the nursing field for travel nursing tax free just for the, a stipend, a stipend or a per diem. It was one or the other. Do you know that that's completely tax free? And just they getting a hundred thousand dollars for them to get for their housing. Now you figure out how much you really want to pay and all of this other type of stuff. But over two thousand dollars a week, roughly ninety six thousand dollars a year, and tax free money just for them to be able to live and travel wherever it is that they want to live and travel. One of my guys don't even own a home anymore. He makes so much money he just live on the road. There is too much information. Truck and trade. Tell them. It's too much information that I'm giving you guys, that I'm giving you access to, giving you access to my network. I was just telling them in the pre-live stream or in the Patreon exclusive Q&A that I'm going out to dinner with my neurosurgeon friend and I'm going to try to convince him to be able to come on my Patreon uh, exclusive and do a live stream where y'all can pepper him with questions and Ask him what it took to get into it and exactly how he, how much he makes is crazy. It's absolutely insane. Listen, if you are rocking with me, if you are a part of the Patreon, if you have not been intentional and you telling me that you still broke is no reason for anybody that continues to rock with me to be still broke with all of the information that I give you on these free live streams every single morning and there and on Sundays in the afternoon. And the information that I'm giving you to start your own businesses, to avoid giving money to the tax man, how it is that you can no longer have to give more than double of your money service and the loans when you more, when you take out a mortgage, how you should not look at your house as an investment. Instead, you should be looking at it. It's too much information. If I never dropped another video, which you know I'm going to still keep killing y'all with these videos. If I never did another live stream in a Patreon and I never dropped another video, if you subscribed for a lifetime, you'd get more than your amount of money that you could ever make. It's insane. It's no reason, no reason at this point in our lives for you to be walking around talking about, I can't support myself. I can't pay for myself. I don't know how to get to the bag. I don't know how to be intentional. I don't know how to move a specific type of way in order to be successful. It's insane the amount of information that these guys was given today. I mean, these guys were so, listen, you can tell it was all in their body language. They laughing, they joking with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you did 250. I did 300 last year. Oh, this is crazy. What we going to do this year? They make more money than they know what to do with. They are literally living a la vida loca in their lifestyles. Real talk. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. I'm telling you to make a million dollars. is like doing a layup at this point. And if you miss your first layup, you can go and do a second layup and you can still get your M. Making a mil. Listen, listen, listen. For people like me and for people that know and people that's in my tribe and people that's in the Patreon and in the Discord and going in the direction that we going, eventually getting to a million dollars is not difficult at all. Seriously. Every last one of these guys I coach. Every last one of these guys are in my network. They can call me anytime. I call them. We laugh. We talk. I give them tips on how it is that they need to move a little bit differently with their money. And then they call me two weeks later and say, 
Anton, man, I made an extra $5,000 a week. Anton, I made an extra $10,000 this week. Thanks, man, for giving me that, that information. All I had to do was implement it. This is not a sales pitch. This is real life in real time. I'm live streaming with you right now. It's what? 3.12 p.m. on a Sunday. After I get done with this live stream, I'm going to be going and I'm going to be chilling and I'm going to probably not even sit, look at the majority of the game. There's Lakers versus the Pistons game. I think LeBron is playing today. I'm not even going to care about what the piss is going on on the floor because I'm going to be inside club access, sitting, talking, having good drinks and kicking it with my friends and club in the club. There's a different life that's being lived by certain people out here. My problems. Listen, we all got problems. Let's be clear. We all got problems, but my problems is going to be different than your problems. If you are not one of the people that's in my network and you just going to be sitting there complaining. You're going to be sitting there whining like a little girl talking about what was me. Anti you know, when I had that conversation on the Lapeef Network and I told people that $100,000 was not enough to thrive. You can survive, but it was not enough to thrive with a family of four. And that's your household income pre-tax and then post-tax that usually amounts to about $67,000 a year. Do you know that when I went and checked those comments, there was a gajillion people that was trying to flame me and say that I was out of touch with reality. If I'm out of touch with reality, trust me, it's important for you to step on my side of the fence because it's better over here. It take a lot of work. There are no shortcuts. You definitely gonna have to take the steps, but let's be clear, it's better over here. Much, much better. Much, 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 much better and more fulfilling. You can have anything you want. You can go and buy anything you want. You can travel to anywhere you want. The biggest problems that we have is trying to figure out how to multiply it and trying to make sure that we don't that we don't lose it and that we don't give too much too much of it to the IRS because it's not like they, they was in there shooting in the gym with us. That's the biggest problems that we have. The other problems that we have is a lot of times not even related to us is making sure that we make the decisions that affect people that work for us or that will be impacted by our decisions because we want to make sure that we're not rich by ourselves. And this is why we pour into other people. This is why we so happy. This is why it's so easy for us, me specifically, to give the information because life is already good. We already got points on the board. I want other people that have the character and is going in the direction that I'm going to also get to the back also. And so I love kicking it with people and adding value to their lives because it's better on this side. It's so much better on this side. I don't want you on a struggle bus. I don't want you losing. I don't want you to feel inadequate or less than or be running in the victim Olympics or the oppression Olympics, blaming the man when there's literally a ocean of opportunity. All you have to do is throw the ball is water all around you. It's going to land in the ocean. All you got to do is throw the ball. But you sitting here whining and being a little bitch talking about what you ain't and what you can't have and who holding you back. You got two arms, two legs. You able to think and you definitely got a smartphone because you watching me on this live stream and you're going to sit here and tell me about how you can't get to the money. And every single week, at least twice a week, I'm doing a live stream or dropping a video on the Patreon, helping you to understand how you can level up, how you can start your own business, how you can avoid giving money to the government, how you can go through this program, not walk out with a bunch of student loans, get your degree. The dude's literally broke down how you can get into nursing in less than two years after you do your prerequisites, walk out out of community college or any kind of program, wherever it is, the state that you live, walk out with zero student debt and be making close to a quarter million, if not more, depending on how much you want to work. And you sitting here telling me that it's impossible for you to cross over and Anton, Anton is out of touch with reality. Maybe it's the other way around. This is the thing that I'm trying to figure out. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe I'm in touch with reality and you're out of touch with reality because I know what it feels like to be you. I've been broke before. I didn't had it all, lost it all, got it all back. 
I know what it feels like to be you, but I guarantee you, you have no idea what it feels like to be on this side of the fence. And it's impossible for you to ever experience it because you're going to forever run in the victim Olympics. And that's unfortunate because I feel like everybody should know what it feels like to have this, this robe on without having a budget and buy for it. I feel like everybody should know what it feels like to have multiple of these robes and not have to worry about budgeting and buying for it because it just feels good in my skin and I like the different color variations depending on my mood when I want to cam up. I've been liking black a lot lately. I've been liking black a lot lately. It should be different. You should know what it feels like to not have to come home and squalor, not have to come home to an unruly girl or an unruly man, a man that feels inadequate because he, he, he wants to play video games relentlessly and he does not want to go to work and get to the bag. He don't want to stay down for the next 10 years so he can live the rest of his life how he wants to. He don't want to do that. You should know what it feels like to live in bliss. You should know what it feels like to want to come. Some of y'all don't even want to come home. You know that it's a monster waiting for you on the other side of the door. And it's a reason for that. But I'm telling you, you can tr you can control it. You can control the narrative. You decide how things go. It's based off of what you do and what you want and how intentional you want to be. But at some point, you're going to have to make the decision. And it's all on you. It's all on you. When I get done, again, I woke up at 4.30 a.m. You sitting here complaining, telling me that I'm out of, re out of touch with reality, but you woke up five hours later than me because you felt like sleep sleeping in. I'm telling you that I was, it's on my Instagram. All you got to look is in my story. I've been vlogging it all day. I got the vlogging camera right here. I've been vlogging it all day. Don't worry about it. It'll drop tomorrow for you, just in case you, don't, you want the verification. I outwork you. I out hustle you. I out grind you because I also have the option to do what I want to do when I want to do it. It is in, it is embedded in me. It's just a part of my nature and my DNA at this point. I don't know what complaining feels like because I take ownership and responsibility for everything that I participate in. Good or bad is mine. I own it. I'm going to live it. But let's be clear. I will never, ever in life, ever be poor again. I don't want to know what it feels like to be you again. I don't want to live in that little house. I'm not willing to go back into my mom's basement. As a matter of fact, my mom worked for me. What your mom do? Oh, you work for her? You got to make sure that, that, you know what I'm saying, you subject yourself to her? It's a difference. It's no reason why a grown man past the age of 30 should be subjecting themselves to their mother. You your mama's man. Why? Because you are a reflection of her and you still running in the victim Olympics. So we got to do better, y'all. We got to break the cycle of this mindset that keeps keeping you in perpetual state of hopelessness and being poor as piss. Two P's, poor as piss. You don't have to be poor. You can have anything you want if you're willing to grind, work for it and be intentional. But let's be clear. It ain't going to be off the luck. It ain't going to be off of somebody gave it to you. Don't nobody owe you nothing. And you're going to have to step out of out of your own way so that you can have what you were truly meant here to be, which is a king and not a pauper. You're not meant to be the worst of us. You're meant to be a king. Take off your bold clothes, put on this robe of luxury. You're going to have to earn it, but it's there and it's waiting for you. Sit in your chair and take your spot. You are great and you better than what it is that you have been. And all you got to do is remove the distractions, remove the people around you that continue to take away from you instead of pour into you so that you can start pouring into yourself. Then you can pour into other people because you can't pour out of an empty cup. Let's be selfish and take care of ourselves and do the work on ourselves before we do selfless and invite somebody into this world that we create and make chaotic for them. And let's create a, a heaven on earth and a bliss because you can have heaven now and you can have it later. But it all depends on you. It's your turn. It's your turn. I'm giving you the blueprint. I'm giving you the work. And now it's your turn to step into your greatness. It's that simple. All right. So let me check into the chat and then let me make sure we get this show on the road because I am looking forward to the game today. I'm looking forward to the great things. I'm looking forward to tapping in with y'all. It's really the first day of the week. Y'all do know that, right? Sunday is the beginning of the week. Monday, we designate it because that's when we start working. 
But we do the work and we get to the bag now so that by the time we start hitting our strat on Monday, everybody's still waking up and we are already running at 100 miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? So let me check into the chat and see what we talking about. My, my man Tony Hill said, we're not meant to be peons. You are not to be meant to be peons being stepped on as an ant. You're meant to be a king. All right? All right, my man, young investor, say, Anton, would it be better to take a commission job or take a salary job? I got two out job offers from financial companies. I'll be graduating with no student loan debt. Shout out to you, fam. I need to mo know more details, right? I like, it depends on your personality and who you are. I like commission jobs because that means that my earning potential is based off of the effort that I put into it, right? If you want something safer and more cushiony and something with up upward mobility, then take the job with just a regular salary, try to negotiate some kind of bonus structure into it, and then maybe you can get a signing bonus to go along with it. But I personally like sales job. I like commission-based jobs, again, because it's based off the effort that I put into it, but only know, you know who you are. It reminds me of people that work from home, young investor. It reminds me of people that work from home because, what's up, Kaya? I love you, baby girl. It reminds me of people that work from home because a lot of people know they're not built to work from home. You're going to be sleeping in. You ain't going to be able to wake up for your meetings. You're not even going to do the same type of work because you don't have somebody looking over your shoulder. So a lot of it, a lot of it is based off of what you put into it. It's not based off of, it's based off of you understanding who you are. Yeah, email me, young investor. Go to my website, um, email me, and then we can figure it out from there, all right? So let's get into the show, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I appreciate everybody for continuing to check in. What's up, Mr. Rucker? We know who you are. We know who you are. It was a great, great, great show. What's going on, Aliquandria? Happy Sunday from Orlando. It was a great show. I want to get straight into the cover photo and show and subject of the show. And then I want to continue to add value to you guys by making sure y'all understand a couple of different things from a financial perspective that I can pour into you. But how many of you guys are familiar with Carlos Gosen? How many of you guys are familiar with Carlos Gosen? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Very, very polarizing figure. Uh, I believe last year he used to be the CEO of Nissan Renault. So the combined company of Nissan Renault, he used to be the CEO, which means he was getting to the bag of Nissan Renault. Okay. How many of you are familiar with him? I'm curious. Well, we definitely going to get more familiar with it today. Because I've been following this story for a, a quite a long time at this point. And if you are not familiar, let me just give you a little bit of crash course of what happened. Um, he used to be the ex-head of Renault and Nissan. And he got arrested in Japan. He got arrested in Japan. And it was largely based off of money. And we're going to dig into it. But he wind up having a daring escape. He had a daring escape. And if I'm not, uh, if I'm accurate, then I think that he's living in Lebanon right now. But one of the things that I find interesting is that there are people that continue to suffer despite him having the resources to remove himself from the possibility of serving a lifetime in prison, considering how old he is. He had the resources to pay the right people to get him up out of that country and escape that level of persecution. And if I'm not mistaken, he's somewhere in Lebanon or something like that. Right. But his escape story is wild. And I think that they're doing something about him on Netflix. And I think that there's some life lessons that we can glean from what happened in his story. So let's just go through it really quickly. Right. Because being rich comes with a cost. Having freedom comes with a cost and being poor comes with a cost. But let's get into it. So Carlos Gosen uh, knows how compelling his story is. Born in Brazil to Lebanese parents. He scaled the corporate ladder to the very top of the global industry to be crowned head of Nissan and Renault before suffering a spectacular downfall. Arrested in Japan and a dramatic finale escaping in a box to freedom in Beirut. 
So if you're not familiar with the story, right, they had put him in a box. They put him on a private plane. Somehow they allowed him to escape out of the country. He was on house arrest or something like that. And he wound up escaping all the way to Beirut. And the Japanese officials was pissed. Absolutely pissed. OK. Um, Golson has already given extensive access to one documentary real versions on Apple Plus and Netflix. So all of that is coming in the works. All right. Um, before his arrest in 2018 on charges of concealing income. His charges was concealing income. Listen, when I'm telling you that rich people problems and their biggest fear is somebody trying to take more from them than they feel like that they already owe. And he was charged with concealing income. Gosen ran a car manufacturer. Now, if you guys don't know, Nissan is a Japanese company. He was running a Japanese company. So uh, before his 2000 arrest, uh, 2018 arrest, Charges on concealing income. Gosen ran a car manufacturing behemoth second to only Volkswagen in volume. So in size of cars made and sold, Renault Nissan was only second to Volkswagen. Volkswagen is a conglomerate of different car companies, including, if I'm not mistaken, Audi, Porsche, Lamborghini, and so many other different companies, right? So many other different cars. The new Porsche Cayenne Turbo is built on the exact same platform as the Lamborghini Urus, okay? The Porsche Taycan and the Audi electric one, whatever the Audi electric one, is literally built on the exact same platform. So in terms of scale, Nissan Renault was second only to Volkswagen, bigger than General Motors, bigger than Toyota, bigger than all of them, okay? Um, his empire included France's Renault, Jap uh, Japan's Nissan, and he had a masterminded, a car making alliance that also took in Mitsubishi. He is now living the life of a free man with his wife in Lebanon. So I was right, which does not have an extradition treaty with Japan. So it's one of the reasons why he chose to travel and escape to Lebanon because they don't have no ties to Japan. And if Japan say, yo, listen, I want you to ship them back over here. If you run over to Canada because you got problems in the U S and they catch you in Canada, they're going to extradite you back to the U.S. to face whatever charges you're supposed to face. Lebanon has no treaty with Japan, so he knew what he was doing. And still working on refuting the Japanese charges as well as doing consulting work via video calls. So one of the problems that we see happen in American society and society at large is that those that don't have often suffer at the hands, especially if you are innocent, you suffer at the hands of the judicial system by not being able to continue to live your life prior to them scheduling your court appearance. You got to stay in jail if you can't bail out. If they decide that you are guilty, despite the fact that you are actually innocent, you're going to have to serve some time and then you can go ahead and do through the appeal process and then hope that they get the DNA in order prior to them releasing you and saying, sorry, I apologize. I shouldn't have put you in jail, so on and so forth, right? <clears throat> but Carlos Gosen had money and resources. So while he was being acute, well, let's get into it. Let's get into the story a little bit. I don't want to get ahead of myself, okay? Golson's Freedom, former CEO of Nissan and Renault, Golson's Freedom has come at a great cost to other people, though, which is one of the things that I want to emphasize in this conversation and this story. An American former Special Forces soldier and his son, these were two of the people that helped him escape, were jailed in Japan for their part in helping Golson escape as were two pilots and an airport official in Turkey where the plane stopped en route to Lebanon. So there was this big plan and this concoction for him to escape. And this American Special Forces soldier was hired along with his son. In addition to two of the pilots where one of them was stopped in Turkey Right. And they escaped. They helped him escape by packing him in his little box and all of this other type of stuff in his private plane. All of these people that I'm sure got paid very handsomely. We don't know exactly what the details of the transactions were, but all of these people that played a role in his escape is still back in Japan. And they say, listen, if we can't get you, we going to definitely deal with them. All right. Golson has been unable to testify in a months long trial of Greg Kelly an American former Nissan executive. This is one of his colleagues, right? 
arrested at the same time as him, whose movements have been limited in Japan since November 2018. The judges in Kelly's case have given themselves until March, until March, to reach a verdict. Now, this was back in November of 2018, but March of 2022 to reach a verdict. Kelly denies the charge of helping ghosts and conceal income. So Kelly was uh, an American former Nissan executive. And then Carlos Golson, who was also one of the people that was arrested on concealing income. What a crazy charge, concealing income. Basically, this tells you that it all comes back down to money, ladies and gentlemen. But Carlos Golson can't even testify on his behalf because they said, listen, you escaped and we want you back. We want you back. I want you back. Let's continue. While the judges deliberate and three years after the initial arrest was well, been three years since this initial arrest, y'all, his public relations advisors. And you got to understand that this man got to the bag millionaire contacted the guardian to offer separate interviews with him and Kelly's wife of 43 years. So his wife definitely held him down. word on the street was that she was one of the ones that made sure that she could help concoct this plan and carry it out to perfection. All right in which both protested Kelly's innocence and criticized the slow moving Japanese criminal justice system. It don't work the same way it do over here. It don't work the same way it do over here. You're going to get this work how we see fit over in Japan. All right. D Kelly has had to start a Japanese language course in order to qualify for a student visa, which allows her to stand in Japan with her husband. She watched all but one day out of 71 of Kelly's extended trial. She said, your life is taken away from you, speaking via video from Washington, where she was lobbying senators at the end of her husband's trial. It's thrown out of the window. So basically her life is over. She's saying that once you find yourself in these spaces, your life is completely over. Now, keep in mind that this story is largely about Carlos Golson. He was the star. He was the one that made the phenomenal daring escape. But meanwhile, all of the people that helped him or he paid or his colleagues, he can't help them. But the options and the access has allowed for him to be able to hire and put himself in a position to no longer be subjected to Japanese justice systems, long waiting trials and all of this other kind of crap. She said she did not blame Golson for fleeing Japan. He had to make that decision that was right for him and right for his family. Asked if he felt he shared any blame for the suffering of others, Gosen said Japan's hostage justice system was at fault. He said, listen, it ain't got nothing to do with me. That's the system. That's at fault. I got to my bag. No, nah, he didn't say all of that. Yes, I feel bad about the fact that something should have been dealt with in the boardroom in a very simple way, straightforward manner, cleared with the audit committee, whatever be dealt with with the hostage justice system in Japan. He's barred from international travel by an Interpol red notice that he is seeking to have lifted. Basically, even though he is no longer subjected to the justice system in Japan, he can't go nowhere else, which I'm sure most people that's paying attention to this is saying that I'd rather be in that situation than alternative. All right. However, he has taken on new consulting work. So he's still getting to the bag via zoom calls. Now, this is one of the things that I keep emphasizing to you guys. Let me say this. He has worked with several unnamed automotive startups as well as environmental technology startups working in wastewater, fertilizer, and plastic results uh, recycling. In some cases, he has taken equity in companies he has advised, although his confinement to Lebanon has prevented him from sitting on boards, he said. He also ruled out working directly in the car industry in the future. So regardless of whether or not what happened in Japan, whether they find him guilty or not, money make the world go round. And so there are still unnamed auto manufacturing startups and different companies that seeking his advice. And so he's still grinding. He's still getting to the bag. And guess what? He's still getting equity. He's still taking part ownership in these companies that he's advising. 
He is still getting to the bag. As long as you can keep yourself free, you will always be getting to the bag and getting rich. Real talk. He has few qualms about portraying himself as an electric vehicle visionary. Under his watch in 2010, have y'all ever been in one of those Nissan Leafs? Under his watch in 2010, Nissan launched the electric Leaf, but the car maker is widely acknowledged to have squandered its lead in electric vehicles even before Golson's exit. In 2007-8, I was the only one with Elon Musk who said clearly that we think the future is going to be electric. He said the market after 13 years is just saying these guys are right. So he was one of the pioneers. This is him with the Nissan Electric Leaf. He was one of the pioneers in electric vehicle manufacturing. All right. Um, let's get to the other part. A Nissan spokesman said, spokesman said the company had found serious misconduct by Carlos Ghosn and Greg Kelly, which later corroborated by multiple government agencies who conducted their own thorough independent investigations. They added the facts of misconduct will be shown during the court proceedings and the law will take its course. So long story short, what really happened is that, and it's politics and everything, ladies and gentlemen, there was a fight for power. There was a fight for power. Over at Nissan, because Nissan and Renault is an international company, they had to travel back and forth. Once that fight for power had reached certain levels, there was people that were saying, nah, we want you out. We're not trying to have you um, play this role anymore. And what's largely be believed to have happened is that he was set up and he was put in a position where he was then arrested. But then he had made some wiggle room and because he had money and power, what happened was he wound up being on house arrest. He hired these people. They did this daring escape. He wound up being successful at it. But still his colleague and the people that helped him escape, as far as they know, is still under a certain situation in Japan where they are facing the harshest realities of helping the best of us. And they are facing the worst case scenario. OK, but the point that I'm trying to make is two things. A. How far are you willing to go to secure your own freedom? Money talks with regard to that talk. And then number two, number two, this man, despite whatever it is that he went through, and now I'm not the one that is, I don't really know whether he did it or not, but my point then becomes is that money talks. And despite the fact that he went through this, and this is a circumstance or situation, I'm sure it's going to be an uh, Apple plus TV series and all of this other type of stuff. But the reality is that he's still getting to the bag and he's still working. This man is winning on all levels, all levels. He's winning all the way across the board. Money talks, ladies and gentlemen, money talks. This story is so fascinating for me and I'm going to continue to follow it. I will give you an update into my perspective on it long term, but money definitely talks. But you ain't never, ever going to even be in a position to be able to have a conversation to be able to have a conversation about what you can and can't do if you're not getting to the bag. You're not a part of the conversation. You are an afterthought. You are an afterthought because you have no value to add. Now, there's one more thing that I want to get into before we end this live stream and it's money related. I definitely want to get into the bag. I want to add value to your lives. And one of the ways in which I want to do this is getting into this whole inflation conversation listen i'm warning you guys i am warning you guys i am absolutely warning you guys every single day that you think you get into the money but if you are not buying assets if you don't understand how money works if you don't understand that your money is about six percent less valuable as a result of the biden administration and the treasury department and all of these different people printing more money every single day and it costing you more for goods and services. Listen, if you make $100,000 a year, basically subtract $6,200 from that. Your money only goes as far compared to yesteryear. About $94,000 as far compared to the $100,000 that it went last year. Now, that doesn't take into consideration taxes. It doesn't consider in, take into consideration the cost of living. It doesn't take into consideration your health care coverage, anything. 
All we know is that that is an astronomical number. Trust me. Year over year, 6% inflation is crazy. It's absolutely insane. But here's the thing. If you're not getting a 6% raise, are you taking a pay cut due to inflation? And this is what the experts are saying. So workers across the U.S. are wondering how rising inflation might be impacting their take-home pay. Meaning, the cost to do business, buy goods and services, when you go to the grocery store and it costs so much money for you to buy groceries, everybody is raising their prices. The dollar store is no longer the dollar store. It's the used to be a dollar store. You go to the gas station and... It costs you more to fill up your tank every single day because you got these gas guzzlers. Your money doesn't go as far. And so a lot of times people get away with it and the government get away with it. And y'all don't have to hold them accountable because it's so sudden. All you know is the money phone. You don't really know the money game. And so what this is saying is that workers across the U.S. are starting to wake up to this reality because a lot of them are tuned into the Millionaire Morning Show with Anton from AntonDaniels.com, right? Link to the Patreon is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. And I definitely want to tap into the poll today and find out what y'all voted for in the live stream, right? But your dollar don't go as far. And again, if you're looking to book me for a private session, go to my website. The link is in the description at AntonDaniels.com and email me and we'll figure that out. I got my people, they getting in touch with your people and we're going to work that out, right? But inflation has risen more than expected. In October, consumer prices increased almost 1%. That is insane. It's insane. Listen, I didn't take economics. I didn't take accounting when I was in college, but I know how money works because I know what affects me. And pushed the year-over-year average to 6.2%, hitting a 30-year high. Meaning the cost for you to be doing anything, the cost for you to breathe is higher. Okay? It was the second month in a row that inflation was higher than what economists anticipated. Now, don't think for one second, ladies and gentlemen, that they did not already factor into the equation and anticipate the economic inflation that they're going to be dealing with to be what it is they know exactly what's going on okay but they have to sell a narrative and they're overseen by lord biden and they have to make sure that his numbers don't plummet as much as they already have because you don't feel like he's doing a good job managing the economy the consumer price index in september jumped 0.4 percent okay y'all don't care nothing about that all right here's the good part The report promoted a 6% cost of living increase for people on Social Security, the largest jump in 40 years, meaning that your Social Security check don't go as far, which is one of the reasons why I keep telling you guys to make sure that you are pouring into your Roth 401k, your 401k, your Roth IRA. Make sure you're stacking your money. If you're going to buy stuff, buy things based off of what can continue to add value to your life by getting assets. And if you are going to spend money, make sure you open up a business and that it's related to your business. So the everyday costs and expenses that other people are trading in their time and their money for, you are writing off as a business expense, as a tax deductible business expense. All of this is in the Patreon. Tap in with your boy. I pour into y'all every single day. This should not be anything difficult for anybody that's been rocking with me for an extended period of time. It's not that difficult to understand for you guys. For the dusty dusties, I get it. Just roll along with me until you no longer become a dust mite. But for those of you that has been rocking with me for an extended period of time, this is not new information for you. So if you don't get a 6.2% raise this year, is that technically a pay cut? Not necessarily, says some financial experts. Anton said it is, an, it is, it is a, pay cut, a pay cut. I say it's a pay cut. You say not necessarily. All right, so let's dissect what the experts are saying because apparently I'm not an expert, but let's dissect what the experts are saying is saying that not necessarily, okay? They saying that while inflation has jumped, overall, the consumer price index considers an array of things a few of which have contributed more to rising costs than others. Guys, it's it's not that big of a deal, okay? For most people, prices of things that they're having to pay for are going up. It's going up. Listen, we admit that it's going up, guys. But these impacts are quite varied across the board. This is all just nothing more than word salad at this point, ladies and gentlemen, okay? 
Energy costs in October contributed heavily to the overall increase. Energy rose 4.8% from the previous month. Gas jumped 6.2%. Food rose 1%, with food at home <laughs> increasing 1%. It's increased more than that, ladies and gentlemen, okay? The cr increases are even more staggering on the year. Energy prices are up 30%. Energy prices are up more than 30%, okay? Gasoline. Gasoline is up nearly 50% from the same time a year ago. That is incredible. 50% increase. Prices of used cars were up 2.5% in October, more than 26% from a year ago. Listen, listen. I read somewhere that the average transaction price for a new car was higher than ever before. Ain't no incentives. I'm not sure if y'all can get A plan papers. And not only that, you gotta wait to get your car. I heard it was something almost close to $50,000 for the average transaction price for a new car. And used cars, used cars, the average price for them rolls quicker from a percentage perspective than new cars. You can't win for losing. You can't win for losing. But again, if we scroll up a little bit, they're telling us that it's not that big of a deal. It's not necessarily a pay cut. This is what it says right here at the top of the line. Not necessarily a pay cut. All right, let's get to the part where they're going to help us to understand why it's not a pay cut. Because of these pockets of inflation, pockets, small, it's only here, it's only there. Most consumers won't see their individual costs go up 5.4% across the board. Listen, it's going to be a little bit lower here and a little bit lower there, and then a little bit higher here and a little bit higher there. But across the board, listen, you won't fully feel it, okay? So not necessarily, yes, but not necessarily. We're going to carefully word what it is that we say to you. If you aren't planning to buy a car, for example, this is how they're justifying it, or aren't taking any trips that would be hit by higher fuel prices, you won't be hit with the highest areas of inflation. So listen, guys, if you don't live regular everyday life, you have to severely change your lifestyle. You ain't got to worry about it. OK, so just keep working where you at. Don't worry about how much it's costing. You just keep doing what you're doing. Not everybody flew on a plane or bought a used car last year. The data doesn't tell the personal story of every single person. If this isn't a bunch of bullshit that they are selling y'all and y'all are buying and selling and living your life off of it and acting like it does not factor it, it's not a big deal. I'm telling you, listen, listen, if you don't learn anything from me today, because I beat this in your head on a regular basis. If you are not listening to me and you don't learn anything from me on a regular basis, understand this It's more important to learn how money works and to understand it. You got to forgive me for cussing. I keep saying that I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. It's more important for you to understand how money works than to just start a business. Starting a business is nothing more than creating another job for yourself. Understanding how money works is how it is that you change the game, okay? So now they go into exactly who is hardest hit by inflation. You. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's you. To be sure... That doesn't mean that people are feeling the impact of higher prices on their budgets. So it's how we feel now. It's not about what the truth is. Interesting. And some people will be hit harder by inflation than others. Generally, those who make the lowest incomes are thus the most vulnerable to price increases. What did I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all? It's not the people that make money and understand how money works are going to suffer. It's those that are at the lowest and the bottom of the rung and they continue to sell y'all. Listen, we're going to tax the rich and give y'all even more of their money. We're going to go with social programs uh, and all of this other type of stuff in the victim Olympics. But it's the poor people and the middle class that are going to pay the majority of the taxes and help for you to suffer even more. And you continue to go along with it because they keep selling you like in these articles and saying, listen, you're not going to feel it. It's because it's a gradual drip. It's onset. It's not going to be an impact. It don't happen like that. It's not like a bullet hitting your, hitting your arm and you feeling the sting. Ah, it's not that. It ain't going to be none of that. It ain't you stubbing your toe. It's not that blunt floor. It ain't that. 
It ain't nobody slapping you in your face. It ain't that. It's a slow, gradual thing. It's somebody grabbing your arm and doing like this. They're going to turn it, and it's going to seem like it's nothing. And then they're going to twist it a little bit more. Ah, I could take this. And then by the time you start to find out that your hand is in a vice, it's going to be more painful than if somebody to just stubbed your toe. You felt it. You made the adjustment. And then that, that little throbbing pain, it stuck around for a little bit, but it wore off. But you knew not to stub your toe again. It's easier to get people to embrace the problems that are in their life if you have it go on gradually. If you just test somebody and do like this, and then next thing you know, you start doing like that, it's start feeling a little bit differently. By the time you realize that they didn't slap you 25 times, instead of just giving you that one slap, and then you can make the adjustment and punch them back in their face. But neither here nor there. Y'all got to ignore my metaphors and my descriptions. They're a little bit more graphic. But I do what I do. I'm a unique case. I'm a unique type of individual, okay? Unique type of individual, all right? So um inflation really does weigh on those on the lower end of the income spectrum adding that energy prices end up being one of the hardest to cope with one of that's one area where it's harder to adjust your purchase quickly if you drive to work you have to fill up your gas tank that's problematic when gas prices are a dollar uh, are up a dollar per gallon companies being hit with rising costs such as um as well may which may mean that wages don't keep pace with inflation Meaning that if the inflation rate is at 6.2%, you got to get at least a 6.5% raise just to be able to justify continuing to do what you do. It's the reason why fast food workers are now making just as much as plant workers. Um, the budgeted median U.S. salary increase for 2021 is 3%. Meaning that you're, even if you get a 3% raise, and some of y'all ain't get a raise at all, even if you get a 3% raise and you all excited about it, you really only losing 3% of your budget instead of the full 6.5%. Companies looking at their budgets realize that raises are probably not going to meet inflation, uh, but what we see is more strategies around really rewarding high performers. How to ask for a raise, blah, 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 blah. We don't care about any of that crap. We don't need you to teach us how to ask for a raise. That's going to be Patreon exclusive information, all right? But the point that we emphasize and the point that I'm making right now, guys, is that stop being bamboozled and stop being told and taught and believing everything that's written and seen because I just showed you how they're using word salad in order to finesse you. In order to continue to get you to buy in and then the next presidential candidate and Kamala Harris is going to be by their side or it may even be Kamala Harris herself. She's going to come along and she's going to sell you this pitch and she's going to say, listen, they the devil over there. So vote for us because you should hate them. When in reality, you should be doing a deep dive on their policies and whether or not they can get things in place, solving for inflation, lowering the amount of money that they're printing every single year, making sure that you regardless of who's in office, is making the right decision when it comes to purchasing assets, things that continue to appreciate over time, adding value to your net worth, making sure you're making the right decisions and no longer falling victims and then finding yourself running in the victim Olympics. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you guys. I love you. Thank you for rocking with me. If you want to book a personal session, again, go to AntonDaniels.com. Make sure that you email me and my people are going to interact with your people and we're going to set that up right? We're going to make sure that we align in our schedule. Again, I'm still adding people to the seat at the table. I am going to be reaching out to certain individuals as my schedule will ease up. Probably sometime tomorrow throughout the day, I'm going to have Rita email you guys and get in touch with you to add you to the seat at the table. So if you want to join the Patreon, the link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. For those of you that saying and texting me and DMing me and saying, Anton, I want to see you at the game today. I will be there in roughly two hours. All right. So I love you. I appreciate you. I am going to be on El Guapo's beautiful, beautiful show coming up tonight. El Guapo at 930 Eastern. I am going to post that on my Instagram story as well as on my YouTube channel. So make sure y'all tune into that 930 p.m. tonight. Make sure you subscribe to the Lapeef Network. Again, I love you guys. I appreciate you. I pour into y'all every single day. I don't miss. I don't miss. If you have not already and you are already a part of the Patreon, make sure you go and restream that conversation that I had with three nurses 
that gave you the game on how it is that even if you're not going to do it, give it to somebody else that can, you can add value to your life and help them to understand how they can level up by continuing to be a part of the, the crew, the Patreon gang gang. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I rock with y'all. Streaming tonight on El Guapo's channel. I'm going to keep y'all updated on that. But until then, I need you to do me one more thing before we leave. Make sure that you share my live streams, my channel, my Patreon with your friends because we don't want to be rich by ourselves. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all later. See y'all tonight. Peace.